Hey, it's Josh Vergara and John Velasco, guys. All right, so we have been here for VR Source, looking at virtual reality and gaming in general. Uh, but you wanted to come on to Android Authority's YouTube channel just to talk a little bit about E3 in general. Uh, we also want to tell you guys about the content on VR Source. After all, John is here for VR Source. You got a bunch of stuff. Yeah, go ahead over here. Uh, I got a couple of videos out. You were able to. Yeah, like five, six, seven pieces of content. So <laughs> yeah, we play yeah. a lot of VR content, uh, and also there's going to be a 360 video, so you can kind of see some of the sights and the sounds of E3. I mean, there's a lot. Everyone's see around. crowding around. I mean, this is kind of a prime spot. Yeah, the I don't background, know. Yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to see it right behind us, but there's a sign that tells you when next year's E3 is going to be. Uh, but you know, I think first for now, we can talk about just sort of our thoughts on the show itself, because we have plenty of thoughts. Okay, so let's talk about the biggest thing here, Yeah, which has to be the lines. Yes. The, the lines and the crowds, which is, you can see right behind you here, mm -hmm. just a huge line. Last year it was totally different. Really? It seemed like everything was just moving along, but this year it was all about the lines. Even just this small, because we're in the yeah. south lobby right now, where, and I don't, I don't want to use the word lower priority, but like the smaller stuff, the less hard-hitting stuff, is here in the south lobby. You know, it's, it's available. It's in direct sunlight. You have the natural lighting. It's a nice place to be when you're not when you're getting kind of overwhelmed. The E3 craziness inside. Uh, but even then, the line for Crash Bandicoot. Now it's a new game, but yeah, there's a line going all the way around the, this, this little booth right here. And I bet you these are all the people who gave up on trying to uh, play the stuff inside. And how long do you think this line is? Just just looking at it. This is easily like a 20 minute line. Well, yeah, I would say 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. But we heard some crazier times, like in video mode? Yeah. When I was, what did they say, four hours? Yeah, there was one. Uh, they, people wanted to play Destiny 2 in particular, like crazy. Uh, and then there was a line around the, the, the Nintendo booth in particular. Oh, yeah. Just, just wrapping around, snaking, and it was just, it was just unbelievable. But, you know, that's. How did when you open to the public? Well, the thing is, we wanted to be able to go around and play certain things. Like, I wanted to play Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Uh, was there anything that you were really kind of interested in playing? Uh, probably some of the uh, Skyrim. Like, okay, yeah. Yes, VR. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he kept, he kept it VR status. I wanted to play some of the new properties. Uh, or, or rather the actual like standalone games. Uh, but yeah, even then, like it, it took forever. And, and I think it was PlayStation that told us, or Bethesda. It was Bethesda that told us that uh, in order to play it all out, yeah, you have to be here first thing in the morning at 10 a.m. And even then the line could be yeah, even earlier than that. Uh, because people were already lining up here two hours before the doors open. So that's the thing. It but definitely has changed so much. On this year, so. so we don't want to really get too far into all of the VR stuff. Uh, uh, because you can go to VRSource.com. We did a YouTube live right outside of those doors right over there. And uh, we talked about the VR stuff that we were able to take a look at. It's just kind of a bummer that today when we had time to do so, we, there was no time. Yeah, like, just walk around and that's it. If you're a super fan, E3 is still a great place to be. Um, and you'll be able to get that glimpse into a game you might end up buying anyway. So, I mean, that's my gripe. <laughs> but otherwise, you know, you come for three days total. And on each day, you pick one thing you want to do. And that's going to take up your whole day. That's, that's insane. Yeah, but in any case, we do have a couple of Android things that we can talk about right now. Uh, and we'll start off with the Pico. Yeah, the Pico. It's a yeah. Pico headset. Well, they're, they're, the, their later one is going to be the Pico Neo. Yes. That's the one with the motion tracking, so you can walk around. Snapdragon 835. 835, yeah. It's a standalone VR headset. You you play, I played with it a little bit. Why don't you give us your thoughts? Oh, well, the other one, I forget which model it was, but it had a Snapdragon 821. Yes. Similar concept. It's a dedicated all-in-one VR headset. So it has its own display, own processor, own proprietary store, um, and it had sense. It sensed motion. It had a controller. Kind of looked like the, uh, I guess, the Daydream Daydream VR headset that's out. It's a right lot now. like it. Very much like it. But the thing is, pricing: two hundred fifty dollars for a dedicated mobile VR headset. I don't know. That's to me kind of tough to swallow. Given like you have, you have a smartphone already. Just pick up what? Just pick up the the. Uh, yeah. Daydream headset. I agree with you there, but you know anybody who wants to get into Daydream who doesn't have a phone already, it's a lot of money to stomach. You know something like seven hundred dollars for a Pixel, and then the Daydream headset itself that doesn't do anything without a Pixel yeah. is already maybe another hundred dollars at least. But then for me, it's I guess the content, what's going to be available. Like that's the scary part. You buy into this, 
you're given a limited set of, yep. you know, stuff to download from the store, and then what happens afterwards? Yeah, there'll be support. VR is a, it has, VR has an incredibly low amount of just hard-hitting content. Mobile VR, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Mobile VR right now, it has a content problem because if you're going to get a headset like this and you end up not really finding a whole lot of like good content that's out there, then $250 does feel like a little bit too much to swallow. Exactly. I agree with you there. But, you know, hopefully Google, with that Google I.O., they did announce that standalone yeah. Daydream headsets are going to be a thing. Maybe the price point will be something like $149, $199 for those. But by then, there's be there better be a lot of good content in the Daydream stack. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, but, but as far as the actual device itself, how did you feel about? Because this is technically our first look at what yeah. could be the daydream standalone. Stand yeah. it's, it's good because it, you're able to actually sense it senses tracking in different directions. Um, even the motion controller, you tilt it. You know, it recognizes those motions. It's funny how um, just how much it looks like a daydream. It does. Even the controller. It does. It does. It looks very much like it. Yeah. Uh, but besides that, I don't know. I wasn't really too too wowed by it. That's just me. Well, okay. Then how about this? Have you ever been wowed by Daydream to begin with? Okay, so there's 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 a big difference between mobile VR and the mobile only VR yeah. experience. Like right now, to me, it's well currently it's missing that third layer, which is basically you know, spatial movement. Yeah. Because for the most part, it's still looking around. Uh, but once these dedicated units come out to track distance, then maybe yes, it's absolutely going to be more immersive. But until then. It's it's really tough, and that's why probably the games are so cheap. Yeah, you know, they're not you're not paying fifty dollars for a VR experience. You're paying more like ten dollars. Um, so we'll see where it goes. I mean, right now there are some award-winning games in the Daydream VR uh, area, like uh, Virtual Virtual Reality, which I'm still surprised you haven't tried yet. Um, it's a hilarious game. Uh, I, I haven't played through it too much, but I'm really looking forward to doing so. Uh, speaking of speaking of gaming and controllers and stuff like that, we did get a couple of looks at a couple of. Uh, well, I was looking for an Android compatible controller because I'm flying to New York uh, a day after the recording of what we're doing right now. And for that long flight, because I have a layover in Chicago, I wanted to be able to like play something, you know, and I wanted a controller for that. I might need to go to Fry's Electronics a little bit later. Maybe we'll do that after this. And I'll take a look at a couple of controllers that I can use for my flight to New York. Um, but we, we ran into Nyko, who, uh, who were developing a integrated controller for the Gear VR. I thought it was pretty interesting. Yes, it's a, it's, it's a slab yeah. that has all the controls and the the, bat, the triggers are on the back, flat part of it. But then it snaps into to the VR. Yeah. So you take that out, put your phone in, and you got your yeah. controller for whatever VR you're going to be doing. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I, the only thing I want to know is whether or not you can use it just as a Bluetooth controller. I don't like see why not. You should yeah. be able to. Yeah. yeah, you should be able to. So that was yeah. That was one thing that I was a little bit disappointed about. I, I, we didn't really see. I'm sure that there are Android games here, yeah. but they're not as prevalent. Even even mobile VR stuff. Like we were asking for every every VR demo and meeting that we had, is there a mobile version? And it's not. And they're all like, no, we're focusing on Vive, we're focusing on Rift, PSVR, and all that. So eh, a little bit from an Android standpoint, E3 is still a little bit disappointing. I'm not gonna lie. It's still catering to the big console gamer for the most part. Some PC, but definitely you look around, it's just pretty much console still. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're coming up on the 10-minute mark for this. Uh, so what I want to do is just ask, you know, first of all, thank you so much for watching all of our stuff and watching this video as well. Remember, head on over to VR Source for all of the different pieces of content we did for all the different VR demos that we had. Uh, so hopefully you guys will enjoy that. And, of course, the 360 roundup that you did. What was your favorite thing? My favorite thing, uh, as far as experience? Uh, all around, yeah. All around. To me, it's still the the uh, Oculus Rift, those touch controllers. Yeah. That one game we played, Echo Arena. Yeah, Echo like to Arena. me, oh the multiplayer VR aspect, totally fun, action packed, and it just really brought this competitive nature out of everyone. And it felt like you were in zero G. So to me, that was very convincing for VR experience. Okay, fair enough. Um, I kind of agree with you there. Like I was actually blown away by how good Oculus Rift was. Not that I thought it was any worse or better than the HTC Vive, but I will always have the HTC. The HTC Vive will always have a special place in my heart because that was the first like walk around VR thing. It blew my mind. At I want to say it was IFA a few years ago. No, it was MWC. Two years ago. Was it MWC? I'm pretty sure it's MWC. Yeah, MWC two years ago then. Yeah. You know what? You're right. It was MWC two years ago. That was the one where like I famously like gushed about just how amazing the experience was. 
But then once we put on those Oculus Rifts with the Oculus Touch controllers, man, they work so well. Just the grabbing and just holding on, it yeah. felt it felt weird. Yeah. Probably my favorite thing that I did at the show, though, uh, especially in regards to our work. I don't know. I'm a big fan of uh, of the beat 'em up games. I actually thought uh, Bloody, Bloody Zombies. Zombies. Yeah, I thought that was really fun. A unique aspect, unique to Quest 2 VR. Exactly. Where your traditional side scrolling fighter beat 'em up video games. Yeah. Keep in mind the stuff we're talking about because there are videos and articles at VR Source for that. So make sure you stay tuned to VR Source for all kinds of reality. And then, of course, you can stay tuned to Android Authority for more from myself. And from time to time, you have John Velasco on the channel as well. And you can stick around for more Android uh, news, uh, maybe some Android gaming news, Gear VR. You know, there are ways of us sort of bridging the gap between the two properties. So keep it tuned here. And remember that we are your source for all things Android and more.